Hi, it's Barbara from Where's Babs. I hope you've had a good Christmas and are getting ready for 2024. I am and doing some financial moving around. I am not a financial advisor, but I'm going to share with you what I'm doing for 2024, which includes the end of the year donations, funding and moving a retirement fund in order to get ready to continue my travels 2024 and beyond. Are you ready? Just as a brief intro to my financial education, it may or may not be the same for you. I had no money. Our family did not have any money growing up. Uh, I always had jobs from when I was a young girl all the way through college and then beyond. I had no financial education. We did not have a lot of money to work with. My mother was not a well-off woman and taught all of her life and divorced my dad in 1968, which is sort of not a thing to do back then. And we did not end up with child support or alimony to really support us very well. So we lived on a teacher's salary, which I thought was fine. You don't know what you don't have, right? But that did not set me up for financial planning or financial literacy in adulthood. I have worked all of my life and had no plans for a retirement fund when I started working in my 20s. There was no conversation with me about what the retirement plans were available to me. So it was in my last seven years of working where I really earned all of the retirement funds that I will be living on. So I'm gonna reveal all of my income and what I've been doing with it and how I've been living on it. You've probably seen in the past videos that I've put out, but I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing for the end of the year. I consulted for a long time from 1988 until about 2012. And at that time um, I was married and he was working most of the time, but I was definitely the breadwinner. We decided that we wanted to travel and I made it clear that I did not earn enough for us to travel and put away money. And we decided that we would prefer to travel. So while I was earning well as a consultant and in my own practice, we probably weren't saving as much as we should have. Well, you know what? I believe you made your bed and now you gotta lie in it. So there's no point in going back, any of us, and crying over spilt milk about what we didn't save or what we didn't have or what we coulda, shoulda done. So I retired in August of 21 with what I had and I'm gonna tell you what that is. As I said, the last seven years is where I earned most of the retirement money that I have. In Australia, there, it's called a super. And because I was an expat living and working in Australia, when I left, I was able to take that $50,000 that they had put into the super for me and cash. Um, and that ended up being $50,000 US. And basically it was a match. So it's very much like a privately funded retirement fund in the United States. They put in 9% and I put in 9%. It was mandatory. So 18% of my salary was set aside before I took anything home. And the same thing happened when I came back to the United States and started working in with the state of Nevada. They put in 9% and I put in 9%. So 18% of my salary again went into this privately funded pension fund. So that's where I earned the bulk of the money. When I retired in August of 2021, I had $151,000 in this Nevada state higher education retirement fund. I also invested that retirement fund in equities through exchange traded funds or ETFs. Again, I am not a financial advisor. I am just sharing with you what I chose to do. Because I was later in my career, in my late 50s, I could have put all that money into a mutual fund and just let it sit there. I decided I wanted to risk a little more and be able to earn when the market earned. So it actually did pretty well for me because I was in my later years, I wanted to amp up and earn as much as possible. So I ended up, I had contributed $103,000. Me and the employer had contributed $103,000. And by the time I retired in August of 21, it was worth $151,000. So that was what I thought I had in August of 21 when I decided to retire, sell everything I had and travel full time. So that was one, one pot of money I knew that I would have. The other one was this $50,000 that I had brought back from Australia, which was sitting in a savings account. And when I started working again in the United States, I decided I would put that into a think or swim trading account. Again, I am not a financial advisor. I'm just telling you what I did. And I invested again in these exchange traded funds or ETFs. And I did not trade on a daily basis, but that money was at least earning or not, depending on the market, more than sitting in at the time a 1% savings account. 
as I've told you in other videos, I applied for Social Security at 62. And that was $1,881 a month that I got based on my uh, earnings. So that was what I had, the Social Security, $50,000 in savings that I put into a Thinkorswim trading account, and then the $151,000 in a retirement fund. So that was what I had when I decided to retire. However, between August of 21 when I retired and December of 21, as you may know if you followed the market, my retirement fund lost 20% of its value. So it went from 151 down to about 130,000. I did not need that money to live on. So like many people in retirement, I just let the ETFs sit there and waited for the market to go up and I really ignored it. And I lived off of my social security and my trading account. So it ends up, it was about $1,881 a month in social security. And on average, over the course of the last two years, I have pulled about $800 a month out of that trading fund to fund my living expenses. Some months might have been more and some months there was nothing that I pulled out of there. And I, I didn't really trade on a daily basis. Here we are entering 2024. I am currently in South America and I will be here until the end of March. Um, I knew that I was gonna be spending a little more to be here, but it was an opportunity that I really wanted to take advantage of. So I started thinking mm, in 2024, I may need to start dipping into that retirement fund. So I called over, the fund is held at TIAA and found out that the employee sponsored retirement fund that I had takes, I knew it took off 20% off the top for taxes, but it also takes 15 days to withdraw money from that account. So when I'm in my investment account, I can withdraw money and get it within two to three days. So it isn't a big process if I needed money, either short term or planning ahead, but 10 to 15 days I would have to plan for. And that 20%, I, I actually got a check back last year when I filed my taxes and I would prefer not to get that money back and have that money to live on. So them taking 20% out is too much. So I decided on a traditional IRA. I opened that IRA and we're waiting currently for the Nevada State Higher Education to release that money from their retirement fund into my IRA. The good news is that in waiting for to do this, the retirement fund has returned to its $151,000 that I had in August of 21. So as you know, the market has been on a high in the last couple of weeks. So it was good timing pulling that money out of that retirement fund now and moving it into a traditional IRA, which I will also select other ETFs to continue to grow that money. So my plan is to continue to live on the social security. As I said, they gave us a bump. So my social security monthly will be 1934 in 2024. And, um, I have some money still left in my investment account. It's at about $12,000 and it's done really well over the last four weeks. So I'm leaving it there because I, I don't need to pull the money right away. But the new IRA that I'm opening will also give me access to those retirement funds in case I need to empty or change or put a pull some money from my investment account. In 2024, I have some plans for additional income beyond my investment account, the retirement fund, and my social security. And in the next video, I'm going to tell you what those plans are. Thanks so much for watching.